and, and I lit it, uh, it would get up to about zero, and zero wasn't good enough to show breath. Even more grueling for Linda was the application of her grotesque makeup. The process required her to sit still for hours each day. They put a TV set behind her so she could see it in the mirror, because she had to be in the makeup chair sometimes four or five hours. The results were terrifyingly real, but quite painful. She had to put these contact lenses in her eyes, white contact lenses that were opaque. And so she was virtually blind when she had them in. You know, they looked horrible to the outsider. And I, I can't imagine what they were like to her, and I know they must have been painful, because I always saw her grimace when she put them in. Perhaps most challenging of all were the scenes of demonic possession, in which Linda was attached to a mechanism that shook her like a rag doll. It went back, and so it went back, it pulled me, so there's the slam. And it, and it was hitting me in the spine, and it got worse and worse. The dialogue is, please make it stop. Make it stop, it hurts, it burns. Stop! Make it stop! It's burning! It's burning! And I am now in so much pain, so I am literally crying, which is obviously the footage I've used, and I'm screaming my head off. You know, please make it stop. Make it stop! You know, all of that raging when she was totally possessed by the demon, that was... Keep away! The soul is mine! She just did it. And I never heard her complain. I didn't, never heard her whine or cry or, or anything like that. I never saw her be scared. If she was, she didn't show it. She was a trooper all the way. And you, you, if you saw the rushes of any of these scenes, you would see her doing the most outrageous scenes, the most, you know, weirded out behavior. And then I'd say cut, and you'd see a, a stagehand come in off stage and hand her a milkshake. But as shooting on The Exorcist kept getting extended, the never-ending schedule took its toll on the young star. What I remember was spending a lot of time looking in the mirror, trying to understand why they were making me a monster. Why did the three months of filming turn into six months, into a year, into a year and a half? Is this what the life was? Is this what I'd be doing the rest of my life? Then came a series of strange events. First, an electrical fire burned down the set. Then cast member Jack McGowan died suddenly just two weeks after his scenes were shot. Co-star Max von Sydow's brother died. Linda's own grandfather died. Some observers thought the movie was cursed, but cast and crew denied it. No, I don't think the movie was cursed. You know, good won and good triumphs in that movie. People dying while we were shooting the movie well, you know, it happens on lots of films. And so I figured, but it was great media hype, and they were playing it up to the hilt. Finally, in December of 1973, nearly two years after production started, the first public screening of The Exorcist was held in New York City. When my name came up, they gave me a standing ovation, and, you know, I just started crying. I, I knew my life had changed. I knew what I saw on film was so powerful, but I did not understand what, how, why. I didn't understand any of it. It wasn't until probably I saw the film all put together that I realized just how great she was. I'm Damien Carroll. And I'm the devil. Now kindly undo these straps. If you're the devil, why not make the straps disappear? That's much too vulgar display of power, Carroll. Where's Reagan? In here with us. Show me Reagan and I'll loosen one of the straps. And you're helping all all the boy, father. Your mother's in here with his cars. Would you like to leave a message? You say, how can a child that age do what she did? When The Exorcist went into wide release, it caused a sensation, shattering box office records and sending audiences into a state of shock. People started screaming and going crazy in the theater, and a lot of incidents of people throwing up or passing out. I don't think any of us were prepared for the response that the movie got, you know, from people running out of the theater and fainting and standing in line for hours to get in, and the press and um, everything that went with it. It was shocking, I think, to a lot of people to see, especially the crucifix scene was very, uh, I think it made a lot of people gasp. This movie created a sensation that, that has 
really rarely ever happened before or since then. Linda's riveting performance as the girl possessed by the devil made her a household name. Linda did a great job in that movie. I think that's what sold it. You know, you could have all of the special effects, but without her being so believable, it wouldn't have scared you. But there was an unexpected dark side to Linda's newfound success. Before long, she was subjected to death threats. I had many people approach me that uh, raised fear in, in everyone around me. Um, I was very well protected. The police were hired to live at my house. I mean, it just scares the living bejesus because you don't know what to do. I didn't know whether to go to the police. I didn't know whether to go to a neighbor. I didn't know whether to, to get my uh, preacher out, a hawk, uh, whatever, you know. I just didn't know which way to turn. Linda's stalkers were never identified, and in time, the threats passed. Yet by early 1974, as The Exorcist continued to arouse and terrify audiences, it was clear that for 14-year-old Linda, something precious had been lost. I don't think that her innocence stayed intact afterwards. I think all that came, the celebrity, probably uh, was wounded, and her innocence got sacrificed. Coming up, teenage Linda falls in love for the first time. Someone came up to me and said, Linda Blair is in the audience. Do you want to say hi to her? I said, oh, sure, yeah, I'd love to. And later, she seeks solace at the bottom of a bottle. I remember finding whatever I could, alcohol-wise, in the house and just drinking. When Lifetime's intimate portrait of Linda Blair continues. <laughs>